Part 8, August. You're going to reach the sky. Fly, beautiful child. Your rhythmics, beautiful child. The fifth grade nature retreat. Every year in the spring, the fifth graders from Beecher Prep go away for three days and two nights to a place called Broarwood National Reserve, or Nature Reserve, in Pennsylvania. It is a four-hour bus drive ride right away, and the kids sleep in cabins and bunk beds. There are campfires, s'mores, and long walks through the woods. The teachers have been prepping us about this all year long. So all the kids in the grade were so excited about it. Eh, except for me. And it's not that even I'm not excited, because I kind of am. I just have never slept away from home before, and I'm kind of nervous. Most kids have had sleepovers by the time they're my age. A lot of kids have gone to sleepaway camps or stayed with their grandparents or whatever. Not me. Not unless you include hospital stays. But even then, mom or dad always stayed with me overnight. But I have never slept at Tata's or Papa's or Aunt Katie's or Uncle Poe's house. When I was really little, that was mainly because... There were too many medical issues, like my trach tube needing to be cleared out every hour or reinserting my feeding tube, and if it got detached. But when I got bigger, I just never felt like sleeping anywhere else. There was one time I had a half sleepover at Christopher's house. We were about eight when we were still best friends. Our family had gone for a visit to his house, and me and Christopher were having a great time playing Legos and Star Wars, and I didn't want to leave when it was time to go. We were like, please, 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 can we have a sleepover? So our parents said yes, and Mom and Dad and Via drove home. And me and Christopher stopped, or stayed up until midnight playing, until Lisa and his mom, his mother, said, Okay, guys, it's time to go to bed. Well, that's when I panicked. Lisa tried to help me go to sleep, but I just started crying, and I wanted to go home. So at 1 a.m., Lisa called Mom and Dad, and Dad drove all the way back up to Bridgeport to pick me up. We did not get home till 3 a.m. So my one and only sleepover, up until now, was pretty much a disaster. Which is why I'm a little nervous about the nature retreat. But on the other hand, I'm really excited. Known for... I asked Mom to buy me a new rolling duffel bag because my old one had Star Wars stuff on it, and there was no way I was going to get take that to the 5th grade nature retreat. As much as I love Star Wars, I don't want to be known for that. Everyone's known for something in middle school, like Reed. Well, he's known for really being into marine life and oceans and things like that. And Amos, well, he's known for being really good at, a really good baseball player. And Charlotte is known for having a TV commercial when she was six. And Zima is known for being really smart. My point that is in middle school, you kind of get known for the things that you're into. And you have to be careful about stuff like that. Like Max Q G and Max W will never live down their Dungeons and Dragons obsession. So I actually am trying to ease out of the whole Star Wars thing a bit. I mean, it's always going to be special to me. It's like it is with the doctor who put my hearing aids in. It's just not a thing I wanted to be known for in middle school. And I'm not sure what I want to be known for. But that's not that. That's not exactly true. I know what I really want to be known for, but there's nothing I can do about it. A Star Wars duffel bag, I could do something about. Packing. Mom helped me pack the night before the big trip. We put all the clothes I was taking on my bed, and she folded everything neatly and put it inside the bag while I watched. It was a plain rolling, blue rolling duffel bag. By the way, no logos, no artwork. What if I can't sleep at night, I asked. Take a book with you. Then when if you can't sleep, pull out your flashlight and read it for a bit until you're sleepy, she answered. I nodded. What if I, what if I have a nightmare? Your teachers will be there, sweetie, she said, and Jack, and your friends. Can I bring Babu? I said with my favorite stuffed animal when I was little. Small black bear with a little soft black nose. You don't really sleep with him anymore, do you? asked Mom. No, but I keep him in my closet in case I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep, I said. I could hide him in my bag. No one would know. Then let's do that, Mom nodded, getting Babu, Babu from the closet. I wish I was, they were loud cell phones, I said. I know, me too, said Mom. Though I know you're going to have a great time, Augie. 
You sure you want me to pack, boo-boo? Yeah. But the way down there, so no one can see him, I said. She stuck boo-boo deep inside the bag and stuffed the last of my t-shirts on top of him. So many clothes for just two days. Three days and two nights, I corrected her. Yep, she said, nodded, smiling. Three days and two nights. She zipped up my duffel bag and packed it up. Not too heavy, try it. I picked it up. Fine, I shrugged. Yeah, I can do this. She said on the bed, hey, what happened to your Empire Strikes Back poster? Oh, I took that down ages ago, I answered. She shook her head. Huh, didn't even notice that before. I'm trying to, you know, change my image a bit, I explained her. Okay, she smiled, nodding like she understood. Anyway, honey, you have to promise me you won't forget to put the bag or bug spray on, okay? On the legs, especially when you're out hiking through the woods. It's right here in the front compartment. Uh Uh-huh. And put on your sunscreen, she said. You don't want to get a sunburn. And don't, I repeat, don't forget to take your hearing aids off if you go swimming. Would I get electrocuted? No, but you'd be in real hot water with Daddy because those things cost a fortune, she laughed. I put uh, I put the rain, rain poncho in the front of the, your compartment, too. Same thing goes if it rains, Augie, okay? Make sure you cover your hearing aids with the hood. Aye, aye, sir, I said, saluting. She smiled and pulled me over. I can't believe how much you have grown up this year, Augie. She said softly, putting her hands on each side of my face. Do I look taller? Definitely, she nodded. I'm still the shortest one in my grade. I'm not even really talking about your height, she said. Suppose I hate it there. You're going to have a great time, Augie. I nodded. She got up and gave me a quick kiss on the forehead. Okay, so I say we're to go to bed now. It's only 9 o'clock, Mom. Your bus leaves at 6 a.m. tomorrow. You don't want to be late. Come on, chop, chop. You, your teeth br- are brushed? I nodded, and she. I climbed into bed. She s- started to lie down next to me. You know what? You don't need to put me to bed tonight, Mom, I said. I'll be fine, really. I'll read a book when, until I get sleepy. Really? She nodded, impressed. She squeezed my hand and gave it a kiss. Okay, then good night, love. Have sweet dreams. You too. She turned the little reading light beside my bed on. I'll write you letters, I said, leaving. Yes, she was leaving. Even though I'll probably be home before you get them. Then we can read them together, she said. She threw me a kiss. When she left the room, I took a copy of The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe off the night table. And I started reading until I fell asleep. Though the witch knew the deep magic, there is a magic deeper still which she did not know. The knowledge goes back only to the dawn of time. But if she could have looked a little farther back into the stillness, into the darkness before time dawned, she would have read there's a different incantation. Daybreak. The next day I woke up really early. It was still dark inside. My room and was even had my room and even darker outside. Though I knew it would be morning soon. I turned over on my side, but I didn't feel at all sleepy. That's when I saw Daisy sitting near my bed. I mean, I knew it wasn't Daisy, but for a second, I saw a shadow that looked just like her. I didn't think it was a dream then, but now looking back, I know it must have been. It didn't make me feel sad when to see her at all, though. It just filled me up with the nice feelings inside. She was gone after a second, and I couldn't see her again in the darkness. The room slowly started lightening. I reached for my hearing aids, headband, and put it on. And now the world was really awake. I could hear the garbage trucks clanking down the street, and the birds in the backyard, and down the hallway I heard Mom's alarm beeping. Daisy's ghost made me feel super strong inside, knowing wherever I am, she always will, will be there with me. I got up out of bed, went to my desk, and wrote a little note to Mom. Then I went to the living room where my pa- my packed bag was by the door. I opened it and fished inside until I found what I was looking for. I took Boo Boo back to my room, laid him on the bed, taped with a little note to his chest for Mom, and I, I covered him with my blanket so Mom would find him later. The note read, Dear Mom, I won't need Boo 
But if you miss me, you can cuddle with him yourself. Love, Augie. Day one. The bus ride went really fast. I sat by the window and Jack was next to me in the aisle seat. Summer and Maya were in front of us. Everyone was in a good mood. Kind of loud, laughing a lot. I noticed right away that Julian wasn't on our bus, even though Henry and Miles were. I figured he must be on the other bus. But then I overheard Miles tell Amos and that Julian ditched the gray trip because he thought the whole nature retreat thing was quite quote-unquote dorky. I got totally pumped then because dealing with Julian for the three days in a row and two nights was a major reason I was nervous about this whole trip. So now, without him there, I could really just relax and not worry about anything. We go to the nature reserve. We got to the nature reserve around noon. The first thing we did was put our stuff down in the cabins. There were three bunk beds for every room, and Jack and Jack and I did rock paper scissors for the top bunk, and I won. Woohoo! And the other guys in the room were Reed and Tristan and Pablo and Nino. After we had lunch, the main cabin, we all went on a two-hour guided nature hike through the woods. But these were not the woods like the kind they would have in Central Park. These were real woods, like giant trees that almost totally blocked out all the sunlight, tangles of leaves and fallen tree trunks, howls and chirps, really loud bird calls, and there was a slight fog, too, like a pale blue smoke all around us. It was so cool. The nature guide pointed everything out to us, the different types of trees we were passing, the insects inside the dead logs, the trails, the signs of the deer, bears in the woods, what type of birds were whistling, and where to look for them. I realized that my low-bot hearing aids actually made me hear better than most people because I was usually the first person to hear the new bird call. It started to rain, and we headed back to camp, so I pulled on my rain poncho, pulled up the hood so my hearing aids would not get wet. But my jeans and shoes got soaked by the time we reached our cabins. Everyone got soaked. It was fun, though. We all had a wet sock fight in the cabin. Since the rain for, rained for the rest of the day, we spent most of the afternoon goofing off in the rec room. They had a ping-pong table and old-style arcade games like Pac-Man, Missile Command, and we played until dinner time. Luckily, by then, it had stopped raining, and we got to have a real campfire cookout. The log benches around the campfire were still a little damp, but we knew, threw our jackets over them. And we hung out by the fire, toasting s'mores and eating the best roasted hot dogs I've ever, ever tasted. Mom was right about the mosquitoes. There were tons of them. But luckily, I had spritzed myself before I left the cabin. And I wasn't eaten alive like some of the other kids were. I love hanging out by the campfire after dark. I love the ways the bits of fire dust would float up and disappear into the night air. And how the fire lit people's faces up. I love the sound the fire made too and how the woods were so dark that you couldn't see anything around you and you could look up and see a billion stars in the sky the sky doesn't look like that in north river heights i've seen it look like that in monotoc though like someone sprinkled salt on a shiny black table i was so tired when i got back to the cabin that i didn't even need to pull out the book i read i fell asleep almost as fast as my head hit the pillow and maybe i dreamed about stars I don't know. The fairgrounds. The next day was just a gra- as great as the first. We went horseback riding in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we rappled up some ginormous trees with the help of the nature guides. By the time we got back to the cabins for dinner, we were all really tired again. And after dinner, they told us we had an hour to rest. And then we were going to make a 15-minute bus ride to the fairgrounds for outdoor movie night. I hadn't had the chance to write a letter to Mom and Dad and Via yet, so I wrote one telling them all about the stuff we did that day and the day before. I pictured myself reading it to them out loud when I got back, since there was no way the letter w- would get to home before I did. When we got to the fairgrounds, the sun was shine- starting to set, and it was about 7.30. The shadows were really long on the grass. And the clouds were pink and orange. It looked like someone had taken sidewalk chalk and smudged the colors across the sky with their fingers. It's not that I haven't seen sunsets before in the city, because I have slivers of sunsets between buildings. 
but I wasn't used to seeing so much of the sky in every direction. Out here in the fairgrounds, I could understand why the ancient people used to think the world was flat and the sky was a, was a dome and the, it closed over the top of it. That's what it just looked like from the fairgrounds. In the middle, it was a huge open field. Because we were the first school to arrive, we got to run around the field all we wanted to until the teachers told us it was time to lay down our sleeping bags down on the ground and get a good viewing seat. We unzipped our bags, laid them down like picnic blankets in the grass in front of the giant movie screen in the middle of the field. Then we went to the row of food trucks parked at the edge of the field and loaded up on snacks and sodas and stuff like that. There were concession stands there too, like a farmer's market selling roasted peanuts, cotton candy, and up a little farther was a short row of carnival type stalls. The kind where you win stuffed animals and throw a ball into a basket. Jack and I both tried and we failed to win anything. But we heard Amos won a yellow hippo and gave it to Zima. And that was the big gossip that all went around the jock and the brainiac. From the food trucks, you could see the corn stalks in the back of the movie screen. They covered about a third of the entire field. The rest of the field was completely surrounded by woods. The sun sank lower and lower in the sky. The tr tall trees at the entrance of the woods looked dark blue. By the time the other school buses pulled into the parking lot, we were back in our spots in our sleeping bags, right smack in front of the screen, best seats in the whole field. Everyone was passing around snacks and having a great time. Me and Jack and Summer and Reed and Maya played Pictionary. We could hear the sounds from the other schools arriving and loud laughing and talking of kids coming out of the field on both sides of us, but we couldn't really see them. Though the sky was still light, the sun had gone down completely, and everything on the ground had turned a deep purple. The clouds were shadows now. We had trouble seeing the Pictionary cards in front of us. Just then, without any announcement, the lights and at the ends of the field went on at once. They were big, bright stadium lights. I thought of a scene from Close Encounters when the alien ship lands and they're playing the music. Da, da, do, da, da. Everyone in the field started applauding and cheering like someone, something great had just happened.